Good morning. Oh, it's really me. No, I'm talking to Guy. <laughs> Good morning. morning. Yeah, well, how are you? I'm very well. How are you? <clears throat> Good, thank you. Well, can you, can actually, you see me okay? Well, I'm having a terrible day. I can't lie. I'm having one of those days we talked about yesterday, that horrible inner monologue. So I'm very looking forward to this today. Let's do this. Let's do it. Yeah, great. So, um, yeah, if we could start with a little introduction a bit about you and sort of how you came to this, and then, yeah, we'll kick off the conversation from there. Yes, yeah, so my world is, is, you know, evolving around mindfulness now, you know, and that's kind of one of the reasons why I'm here. And there's a quite a, usually there's a misunderstanding as to, you know, what mindful is and why we do it. And kind of one of my journeys has been trying to explore that. And so just to take it back a bit, it was a combination of passions. So the just having great conversations, I love that. I love listening to podcasts. And also some of the philosophical questions as to, you know, well, what is the purpose of life? You know, why yeah. are we here? And for me, I found those fascinating. So began a podcast initially with my friends where we would have these conversations and debates because I had a group of friends that weren't particularly interested in it and I had a group of friends that were. And it's, yeah. it's just amazing how different the conversations are and how, you know, how fluid and how, how juicy they can get when it comes from the heart. And it's about, you know, some of the, the, the deeper questions in life versus, you know, what happened over the weekend with the football so it was a combination of those passions and then that eventually led me to start inviting guests onto the podcast. And then quite quickly as I, as I began that, um, I partnered with a charity called Action for Happiness. That's and it cool. was this, yeah, and it was this wonderful relationship where, you know, it really helped me to kind of hone the podcast towards, well, you know, what matters in life, you know, and how, what is happiness and, you know, what are some of the things we can do to achieve that and so I, yeah so I had some fantastic guests and I started to see these common themes and some of the common themes were you know a lot of people were talking about helping other people mm -hmm. so in whatever, whatever field that they were doing ultimately their enlightening moment or their their path changed when they started to realize that it was about other people yeah so even the science shows that doing good feels good you actually feel better when you're helping others yeah, it's kind of selfish a little because it does feel good it does feel very good and not only does it feel good but it's backed by the science yeah so i had you know daniel goldman on the the author and who coined the the phrase emotional intelligence he translated for the dalai lama for over 10 years so really you know involved in this work and to, to be able to hear their best thoughts and their collective thoughts after all their years of studying and meeting with the best people, you know, what are some of their, their, their learning lessons? What would they say to their younger self? What matters most to them? And when you yeah. start to do interview after interview and you try and always hone in on these questions, I began to put a picture of, well, if this is a game of life, you know, what are the rules? How should one play this game? Yeah. And so that led me down and then my co-host at the time, and a very good friend of mine, told me about this thing called mindfulness. And I said, okay, yeah. When we spoke about it on a few podcasts, and you know, oh yeah, I know mindfulness. Just be there, you know, be in the mind. Yeah, I, get, yeah. I, I get it, I get it. Yeah, that's not really for me, but I get it. And the more that we spoke about it, the more that I took interest. And then it wasn't until I first sat down and actually tried a few mindfulness exercises that it was a very, very fast process. It clicked very quickly in the sense that it opened my eyes to how, how many thoughts are just constantly, you know, going through the mind, the, these thoughts. Yeah. And the more that I just spent time, you know, in this laboratory of our own mind, which we very rarely spend time. I mean, we're there all the time, just like lost in thought, but very rarely are we there deliberately observing what's going on. Yeah. And it, was sure. that, and it was through that observation, it's like, wow, I'm just thinking so many thoughts. And, and then after, you know, paying that scientific role, if you like, of being 
you know, okay, let me diligently take note as to what's going on. Yeah. And then I started to see reoccurring themes, you know, and, and a lot of the recurring themes were that every day there's a lot of negative thoughts that are going on. Yes. Right. And so that led me to another path. Well, if there's negative thoughts every day, you know, why should I be surprised the following day if I get these same negative thoughts I had yesterday? Yeah. And I started to see the repetition and I started to see the negativity. And then, and then from that moment on, nearly every other podcast I did was about mindfulness, having all these great guests like John Kabat-Zinn, who's, you know, literally the father of modern day mindfulness. And if you do any kind of MBSR course, any mindfulness course, you know, it's his curriculum, it's, it's his content. Wow. And an amazing friendship grew. And, you know, it's, it's just wonderful to, to have these amazing people in my life that can, through their work, through their books, their TED Talks, and really kind of help on this journey of under, peeling away the layers of this onion. Yeah. And, and, you know, happiness, who I really am, learning more about myself and who I'm not, all those negative labels and doubts that we kind of box ourselves in, into, yeah. um, starting to liberate myself. Yeah, liberating yeah. myself from those, you know, those, those um, limiting labels that I put on myself and maybe other people have put on me. And yeah. ultimately happiness levels increasing and this, <clears throat> and then combine that with how do I help other people? It just, it's just this beautiful kind of, Know, podcast sharing meditations and yeah I guess that, that's that's where I am today now you know one of my goals is how do I help other people so yeah what's quite interesting do you kind of almost feel like you kind of got a cheat sheet like because I'm trying not to fangirl all over the kind of yeah. the people that you know and that you've surrounded yourself with but I know you've mindfully done that <laughs> yeah. um, but do you feel almost like now you have kind of like a cheat sheet where it's like, okay, I know what these guys would have told their younger selves. So like I can either like take this information in or I can kind of know it like you knew mindfulness before. It's more like, like not reinventing the wheel. If there's mm -hmm. like experts that have done it before me, you know, why try and, and do it again, not to say that I'll follow everything blindly, but again, no. when you, when you hear, the same themes repeat and repeat and repeat. It's like, ah, oh, you know, there's something there. Now let me do a bit of my own exploring. Mm. And that's very cool. Yeah. Okay, so to kind of start off, like obviously we're having a lot of, uh, we're an art collective um, and right. we're trying to showcase as many artists during this pandemic as possible because we're at home, we've got nothing else going on. But like you say, the more podcasts you did about mindfulness, um, Sorry, the more you knew, the more your podcast became very mindfulness focused. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I think it's so great. And thank you so much for coming on today because there's kind sure. of been a, a couple reoccurring themes I'd love to sort of discuss with you today that have come up from a few chats. Yeah. And then if you kind of have any advice or, or things, not specifically for creatives, to be fair, because I think, like you said before, um, kind of it applies to mm -hmm. you and your everyday, so anyone can use it. Yeah. But yeah, so sorry, the the first thing I always sort of ask people are is like what are you proud of and what are you most afraid of? So sort of just to capture a little bit of the handway like in your journey what's been sort of your proudest moment to date so far? Cuz I, I believe celebrating what we do as well along the journey is important. Yeah. I don't know if it's proud, but I was struggling as well to try and find well what do I want to do in life? You know, I had finished university and I didn't really, I mean, my dad was a businessman. So I said, you know, let's do something business oriented. I did okay at business in college. So I pursued it at university, but it wasn't, it's like, what do I do now? Do I just go and join, um, you know, a company somewhere and slowly make my way up through the ranks and find happiness? Or was there something bigger out there? And I wanted to explore that. And I think what, not so much proud, but just just whether it's coincidence, whether it's luck, but again, this 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 idea of merging what you love to do, you know, okay. with its conversation, podcasting, friendships, socializing. If you can do it in certain, and helping others, if you can do it in such a way where it combines, then that's yeah. really the, that that gold, because then you know you got a strong strong a strong solid foundation, so that anything that you do thereafter with that as the base. It's, you know, it's, it's going to be 
and you can tweak it along the way. You can add and remove. And for me, what, what I really loved was just finding something. Yes, I, I found something and everything that I've done since then has, you know, I really feel that it's, I wouldn't want to say my calling, but I really feel that it's in line with, you know, what just feels right. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, maybe proud is the word is not exactly mm -hmm. right. But the moment where, like you say, it all clicked together for you is is a perfect mm -hmm. moment for me because it stands out to you. I suppose it's more an important moment. So, yeah, and then um, the reoccurring themes um, that we've kind of gone through is, first of all, some creatives feel this sort of need to be stuck in a really negative sort of space. They feel they produce more or... Like, and I don't know that that's a necessarily a positive space to to stay in. And I wanted to, you to expand a bit on like how we choose, you know, the the, yeah. the choosing side of emotion. Yeah, because when I hear that, it's because if they say they produce some of their best work or they they feel that they can be more efficient when they're in that state, then so be it. I'm not, you know, who am I to say? you know, how you make your best work. But if you're stuck, if you're stuck in that negative thinking and you can't get out of it, and so, you know, the, the artwork is like a byproduct almost yeah. of that, then, you know, that might be something to, to look at. But if you, as an artist, say, you know, I'm going to use these emotions of whether it's joy or love or anger to do something, and then afterwards it's like, you know, you, you go back to you made that choice to go into that state and you, you can help, you can cultivate it and you can nourish it and that allows you to. But if, if you aren't feeling negative emotions and you know, you produce your great work, if, if you cannot snap out of it, if you are a prisoner yeah. to that, it's like, okay, well, when it comes on, then I go and then whenever it randomly turns off, then that's the way, you know, but to be, have a bit more control as to what, how you're feeling so that if you want to then recreate it, if you say, look, I need to be really emotional in order to do a certain piece, or I want to be, you know, in a, like a dark place to, to produce this work. then if you do it by your own choice, great. But if you do it because, well, I'm stuck in this negative funk, so I'm going to do it anyway. I want to do yeah. it on, on design. Then those are two, you're coming from two completely different places. And yeah. the reason why my, you know, I, you know, some of the, benefits of having this conversation around mindfulness is just to help share some insight that all day long we're thinking just thinking 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 and the majority of our thoughts are are actually not useful or, or negative they're thoughts about doubt they're thoughts about procrastination the the things that to-do list you know stuff that's coming later stuff that's happened in the in the past and very rarely is about what's going on now yeah and so we hear the term the power of now and being now and be present and there's one thing saying it and the other thing really being there and actually doing it mm -hmm. and they're completely different yeah so not, not only are we thinking non-stop but the most of the time we don't know that we're thinking mm. so we're, we we go through the majority of the day like 70 percent of the day lost in thought yeah and so with mindfulness, it allows us to sit back and observe the thoughts as they take place rather than being a victim to it. So let's just say you're about to sit down and write an email or, you know, paint or do something, do your craft. And then immediately a thought comes in, you know, go make a coffee. Okay, so let me go down. I'm going to go and do make a coffee. And then you think, oh, I've got to send that email. So I go and send that email, then we start to, you know, these, this list of thinking comes and it's very distracting. Mm. So what this, as an artist or, you know, whatever, I'm at work and I'm trying to write an email. It's like, how effective and how productive can I be during this time? And so what it is, is, is using mindfulness to sit back, observe the craziness of the thoughts, observe how frequent they are. And by doing so, it starts to open a new way of seeing your life. Mm. And what I mean by that is, if you're having a negative thought, 
for example, you hear something about the coronavirus or you, you say, oh no, this. Instability in that moment, just to catch yourself when you've had that negative thought, I say, oh, there it is. It's a negative thought. You, something's popped up on Instagram and it's, you know, how many deaths have been for Corona? Yeah. Right. So as that thought, as that triggers a thought in your mind, how quickly are you able to, to realize that that's a thought? Rather than let it come into your mind, oh, Corona, then these second and ter secondary and tertiary thoughts play out their thought patterns. And it might be five or six minutes before you even realize that you've gone down that thought pattern. And so, so through mindfulness, what we're doing is that as soon as we, we're practicing this observation skill, so it's not chilling out for five minutes and relaxing, it's we're sitting down, standing up, that doesn't matter. But what we're doing is, we're allowing just the thoughts to go by. And as the thought arises, we observe it as if it was on a screen in front of us. And then we do, as we, we notice them go by. And every time we notice a thought, we bring our attention back to the breath. A thought arises, we bring it back to the breath. So to go back to the point I was making earlier about how it affects artists as far as creativity and productivity, it's the ability to sit down for an hour and focus on one thing. You know, for a lot of people, that's very difficult. Mm. You know, you, we were talking yesterday about procrastination. It's like, okay, well, I felt it as well. We're all at home now. Look, there's so much good stuff to do. But then when it comes to doing something, oh, I'll put it off till tomorrow or, you know, I'll do it later or, you know. But then what happens is we start to label these tasks negatively. Yeah. So that the thought comes up, oh yeah, let me do some piano today because I've been putting it off. Or let me finish that book. Or my friend sent me this YouTube link. And then when it comes up, we start to label it negatively. And so that every time we keep pushing it and pushing it away. But what yeah. about the next time a thought comes up, okay, I need to practice the piano today or I need to you know, get started on my art project. That thought comes up before you think, oh, I can't be bothered. And all those secondary thoughts is to notice it as it arises that first yeah. thought and then witness what happens and witness all the thoughts that go around and instead of you being so attached to that all the other thoughts around it it's to notice it for what it is and then be able to say if i'm going to think about doing my work thought comes up instead of being put off by all the negative chat around it i can now respond rather than react and although it's easy to say it's about a daily practice and the daily practice allows us to strengthen this muscle so that when these thoughts arise, because we've practiced this observation skill, we can say, ah, rather than just going ahead and following all the, the negative chat, which I would usually do because that's how my, you know, my brain is wired. I'm starting to rewire it a bit so I can have a bit more control in how I respond to it. Yeah, I'm smiling to myself because I have sort of my own example. Um, I've always wanted to do the splits. Um, so I downloaded this app. I set the alarm for nine o'clock, like knowing I'm up way before nine anyway. Yeah. Um, but, the, you know, it shows you your progress on the thing. And then you see all my first sort of week, like I've done it at 10 to six. I've done it at five o'clock. I've done it at three. Yeah. And to, like I said to you yesterday, I already put a negative connotation on mindfulness by saying I can only meditate through doing physical activity, like getting lost in washing a dish. I'm really good at being present in that moment. Mm -hmm. um, but I've already put a negative, like you say, attached that negative thing to the mindfulness because I know the theory behind it. I understand. I, I live by lots of the principles behind that theory, but yes. that it really frightens me. I know it's a very, very powerful thing, but it's, it's also incredibly daunting because you, like, it's, it's daunting, daunting because you've told yourself it's daunting. Yeah, exactly. Right? And, and, and your experience with it has led you to that conclusion. Right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Ben is asking, what if the negative thoughts are constant, but you still go about your day and work? Like how, if you could expand on what Ben's asking. Well, negative thinking is completely normal. I think that's one of the key things I want to say straight away. You know, you only need to sit with your thoughts to realize, well, wow, there's a lot of not useful stuff and there's a lot of not negative stuff. So the aim is you can't stop the negative thoughts. But what you can do is you can start to change your relationship with them. Yeah. 
and you know people say well that's that's easy for you to say and you know it's not easy because you know it's just like going to a kickboxing gym the first day and you have a class or you kind of look from the outside say no I'm no good at kickboxing well it's like well yeah well how much have you how much time have you spent trying to improve your craft to improve your how to meditate because negative thoughts are completely natural for everyone mm. but the thing is when we have a negative thought we're actually triggering off a release of these chemicals in our body so yeah. for example you think oh i've got a, a meeting with my boss or i've got a deadline or you know coronavirus or just that's triggering we're literally microdosing ourselves right but when i have a thought about coronavirus you know it triggers off these chemical a thought releasing chemical but the longer i spend pondering on it ruining mm -hmm. it and the the more of this kind of these this cortisol the adrenaline's being pumped into the body so what we're trying to do is not trying to limit it i mean to stop it completely but if we were spending like 70% of our day in negative thought what if that's now you know 65% and then what if that's 60% right because we're not going to stop negative thinking that's going to be there anyway mm. that that's fact but when it comes the power that it affects us with and how we let it affect us that is what we have control of yes and so in order to nurture that we need to become first we need to develop this skill of observation so that when they come is to notice them rather than oh my you know I'm having a meeting with my boss so I'm going to get anxiety or I've got you know a fight coming up next week or I've got a deadline I need to hand in this art project by then or you know my my investor wants me to complete this by then those thoughts when they arise we needn't spend time dwelling on it because it's the initial thought itself you know shame on them but if I still dwell on it shame on me I don't yeah. say shame because it's very very difficult I'm not saying it's easy just to do that but the practice of mindfulness allows you every day just to kind of witness the thoughts and the more you yeah. witness them it's like oh every day I'm having that negative thought and I'm having that so then when you see it the following day and the following day it's like the fifth day is like well I'm not surprised to see it there because I know that every day those kind of negative patterns reappear but we're so connected to them we've lived our lives so intertwined with these thoughts that we feel that are part of ourselves Yeah. So when we can sit back and then that the negative thought we're having them all day yes we're having them all day but what are we doing about it Yeah right and by doing this mindfulness it changes the way the relationship that we have with our thoughts and it could be the worst thought that haunted you since a kid but then when you start mm -hmm. to to see it in a new light you start to take away power from that It's not that you want to stop all your thoughts you know and it's like you might have some nice thoughts that you want to dwell on but why suffer in each moment a thought arises you have the choice do i want to suffer or do i want to be present or do i want to shift my awareness to something else and focus on you know how i can be creative or how i can you know three good business ideas that i can come up with in the next 10 minutes yeah. rather than having a negative thought and feeling like you're stuck there and you're a prisoner to it and again yeah. it's something that takes yeah. practice this morning um in the midst of actually having a really like negative feeling morning like i got out the shower and i could feel getting quite teary and emotional and i like i sat down and i was like no this let's acknowledge that this shit feeling is here but i'm not having it all day like it sits with me but it really helped like that conversation with you yesterday that i sat down and for the first time i was like okay this doesn't serve me any joy it's really making me feel down i have like i'm super gassed to have this chat with you gi honestly mm. like i'm super super gassed and i just was feeling terrible and that moment of okay this doesn't serve me any purpose other than making me feel an anxious and really nervous like i'm going to have a chat with gi he's really really lovely the things he has to say is going to help a lot of people mm. so and that really helped not to kill it the whole way but I feel substantially more in control and a lot less sort of trying to fake that I'm oh, hi gay morning how's everyone yeah. I genuinely I'm feeling better I don't feel the best but yeah. that acknowledgement really helps so Ben I hope that that helps um but yeah just to finish off like uh the point I was making before um to have that physical now when you check my um app for my splits everything is sort of 7:30 8:00 it's getting into a much better routine but I'm 
still finding that I'm better to do a kind of physical mindfulness. Um, but hopefully after today, I'll mm-hmm. stop being stuck with pussy. <laughs> Yeah, so, so you've already labelled it. You need to be doing something physical in order to practice mindfulness. Exactly, I've made myself my, yeah. and trained yeah. myself. You're like, no, you're no good at like thoughtfulness. You're only good at physical. So it's my own fault. Yeah, and we often talk ourselves out of doing doing a lot of things before we even get to experience it. Like, you know, mm-hmm. you might grow up thinking, you know what, I'm no good at maths. I'm more of an artist or artistic type, or I'm more you know, vice versa. You hear that a lot. And it's like, okay, well, where does that thought come from? Where does that limiting belief come from? Because then as you move forward in life, if there's like a mass problem or there's a mass related thing, you're like, you know, no, I'm no good at that. You kind of like, mm. you've decided that that's not the case. But if you actually spent some time learning it and improving it, it may not be the case. Just as like we're in yeah. school and there's that, there's that little kid at the, sitting at the front raising his hand and he's so good and you always get, he's just really good at maths. You know, he's a he's a maths maths kid. He's a natural, but how many hours has his parents been making him sit at home, or how much has he he himself wanting to learn, and to to train in that art? So it's it's trying to when you notice these limiting beliefs. So you think, let me do some mindfulness. Oh, I need to be doing yoga, or I need to be stretching for me to be mindful. Or I need to wash the dishes, or I you know or you know I feel a heavy burden of I don't want to do mindfulness every time it comes up. Yeah, I know it's good for me, but notice as soon as you have that first thought of I want to do mindfulness, to notice the chat that comes as a result of it. Yeah. Because you'll notice that that chat comes up every time you think about that. And so what we're trying to do is, because we meditate every day for 10, 15 minutes, for those that meditate, we're just familiar with the observation. Okay, so I'm noticing the thoughts. So when I think of mindfulness, Notice what what other thoughts arise of that, and then yeah. if you and then when you're able to notice thoughts, you're you're able to do something about it. And again, remember, mm-hmm. one thought will trigger another, that triggers another, and triggers another, and quite soon we're lost. Yeah, but what if the thought is, I'm not worth it. You know, I, you know, what if the thought is, you know, what this world is coming to an end. I don't even want to get out of bed. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, if you tell yourself that, that's how you're going to believe. And then okay. you're going to, you know, again, pumping yourself with these negative chemicals with doubt, all because mm-hmm. of the way that you framed it and what you told yourself. Yeah. But in that, but if you, yeah, so it's the last thing I want to say on that. But if you, fr- through practice, like I said, this is not easy to do. You know, just like I said, go to the gym and try kickboxing with no experience and see how you do, right? Yep. You might, <laughs> you might, you might wing it. You might be a natural in certain areas. You might improve. But until we actually do the formal practice of sitting down every day, it's like that, you know, what we were speaking about, the wax on, wax off. In the mm. old Karate Kid movie, you know, you say, Mr. Miyagi, Daniel Sun. Or if you know you're one of the younger listeners, it's more Jackie Chan and um, <laughs> Will, Will Smith's son. But the, the idea being wax on, wax off. So the, the master makes the student do this. He's paint, well, paint my fence, paint my fence. And so the student's doing this for like, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks. And he's fed up. He's like, why am I doing this? This makes no sense. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Mr. Miyagi goes, ah, he goes, wax on. And so he blocks it and he blocks another one. And then he realizes that the tool that he was nurturing and cultivating is actually effective. He didn't know it at the time because it was just repetition. But when, the, when he needed it, when the challenge came, he, at least he had something to draw from that. He didn't have zero. He had something. Yeah. And in the same way with the meditation, it's the idea of not only observing thoughts. I mean, that is key and can be very enlightening. Just like, wow, so many thoughts. But it's once we notice that we're thinking, you know, without being angry or it's like, why do I keep thinking that? But once we notice that we're thinking, it's just with kindness, bring our attention back to the present. And in this meditation, we bring it back to the breath. And then so yeah, we're, we're focusing on our breath. Go on, sorry, go on. Yeah, like, no, when you were saying about the Mr. Miyagi yesterday um, and we equated it for artists, like doing a page a day, you know, like I'm as an artist quite afraid of a blank page because it has to be beautiful and perfect. That's like nonsense I'm putting pressure on. But And you've just like, labeled doing, it that way. You've labeled it. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Doing that page a day, even if it's a page on a line, anything, a back of a fag package, like literally yeah. just doing something every day. 
um, like you say, it trains like wax on, wax off. You start training your eye, you're training your hands, you're getting that movement. And you also might have to throw a hundred pages away to get to that one page that you're sort of, you're like, that's cool. You're done with that. But it takes yeah. those hundred pages. It takes waxing on and waxing off to do that. So it is about the consistency of like, even this morning in my little, mm, I was like, you can't have sat and talked to this man for like 45 minutes yesterday and you're going to talk to him now and you can't put in practice some of the fantastic things he just was reminding you of. Yeah. Like that's what's great is like I say, you don't do it from like you have the science, you have the years of surrounding yourselves with these people. So to be able to relate it like that as an artist was really grateful. I was really grateful for that yesterday. Yeah, and then from what I understand, an artist can be quite a solitary thing, especially in confinement. So it's like, well, how do we keep motivating ourselves? And I know in, in the writing field, you know, there's something called writer's block where you feel like, yeah. you know, you, you just can't put anything on paper. It's not coming. And then there are moments where you feel like you're in flow, right? So yeah. you feel like, I don't even need to put effort. It's just coming out. And not only that, but you wake up motivated to continue you know, when you, when you feel that passion. So, well, how can we, you know, possibly, you know, how can we culture that? I mean, how mm. can we nurture that, cultivate it? And <clears throat> so one, you know, one of the benefits to, to a consistent practice in mindfulness, it helps develop states of flow. Now, the idea of flow, it's when you hear, for example, you know, people rock climbing or when doing dangerous things, like I do it because... When I'm there, I feel like I'm not in my head. I'm just in the moment. Mm -hmm. Some people do it when they're, you know, when they're painting or something. It's their ability where, where they're just there. And so how do we help to recreate that without having to be up climbing a wall or have to be parachuting or, play, you know, being playing a sport? How can we, you know, help to, to be in that space? Mm -hmm. And again, it's with the mindfulness because let's say we're sitting down, start painting, and then it's like, oh, you know, this world's coming to an end. And, but what if, I, what if every time a negative or a thought came in, so we're starting to paint, it's like, oh, this world's coming to an end. It's like, I see you, I see that thought. But for now, I'm going back to my art. I've got to call my mum. She's probably alone. I'm worried about her, okay? But for now, I'm going to mm. go back to my painting. I want, you know, Sainsbury's going to be closed later. I better hurry up and go and get some, some milk. Yeah. But for now, I'm going back to my painting. So what it is, it's trying to be disciplined. It's every time your brain throws you a thought and a distraction, which it will, yeah. it's in those moments. It's like, okay, I've set myself, like you might want to set yourself aside two, three hours. Okay, within these two, three hours, all I'm going to do is my work. And every time, so, you, yeah, every time you say, oh yeah, but it's so sunny outside, I should go outside and probably have a, no. For now, go back. And then what happens is very soon, you start to get in the habit of just like, okay, nope, not now, go back to it. Nope, not now, go back to it. And then the, the more able, the more you are able to do that, soon it becomes so natural that you start to get in the zone where all these distra distractions become like background noise. Yeah. Because usually in the first 15, 20 minutes, they're so loud and they're just so, I've got to do this, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. But you find that once you get in the habit of you notice a distraction, you bring your attention back. You notice a distraction, you bring your attention back. And then by, by doing this a lot, you, you quicken the path or you quicken your ability to like actually get in the zone. And it's like, okay, no, no, no. Then all of a sudden, you, no, okay, this is cool. Then, then, you're, then you're in the work. Yeah. Oh, no, it's yeah, like, it's so, it's so great to hear it in such a practical sense because it's not like you're trying to shame people from having these negative thoughts. And I'm really... Ben had to go, he says, thank you. I'm really Ben sort of shared that, um, that question because there are really days where if I don't wake up, like, oh, I really feel okay with it. Not that I actively want to take my own life, but there's that low of like, and then you feel it all day and you can't go onto Facebook or you can't because you don't have that tool to kind of disconnect. Sometimes I just actually have to drop my phone. Like there's a physical like, oh, Mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm just not mindful enough to not get sucked into that emotionally. And like a lot of it, when you say observing the thoughts for me, I get very emotionally attached to 
um, to things and I wanted to bring you to the next thing of um, when people kind of place a seed of doubt. Like um, I shared with you an example from my childhood wearing a pair of trousers. My mother had made a comment that I took personally my whole life and when I'd sort of spoken with her, she couldn't even remember saying it. It was just sort of, and when I took my emotion away and just objectively looked at it, it was a, an absolute fact. She wasn't saying it about, but for, for art, from an artist's point of view, that kind of, that teacher or that discouraging moment, like, and for people in general to connect to their creativity, because it could have been, you know, the girl next to you drew a bed of flower, like my friend Gordon used as an example. So you now think you can't tap into your creativity. So I suppose in a very roundabout way, I'm kind of asking, oh, I've, I've just rambled on for so long. What am I trying to ask? Well, you? I mean, were you talking about, right, so your mother made that comment about, you know, wearing the, the light oh, trousers. Yeah encouraging comments mm -hmm. to, to keep people from like how do you utilize mindfulness in separating yourself from those emotionally sort of damaging comments from your past or from loved ones that maybe mm -hmm. wasn't necessarily that intention but you took yeah. it that way when we have thoughts right there are very there are all kinds of thoughts right there, there's the thought of you know, stuff that I need to do like you know one of one of the things I know is about me is I wake up and I'm like I've got this call at three o'clock and I've got that to do and and I'm just I've got my to-do list and it's like okay I've got a meeting with my boss creates a bit of anxiety but to notice those and the more we practice you know the, the more those scary thoughts don't stop but the way we deal with them gets a little bit easier mm. then you have these really powerful thoughts like when you you know some people have suicidal thoughts some mm -hmm. people see the corona and they think oh the world's ending and it, and it really really traumatizes them and a lot yeah. of us hold negative thoughts from their childhood as well where they've been so pr those profound incidences have remained with us that have helped shape the way we think about certain things mm -hmm. and so in order to deal with those harder ones we need to train to learn how to cope with um, the ones that aren't as emotionally impactful yeah right so it's like going into the kickboxing gym and you know you're fighting a, a child or you're fighting you know someone twice your size yeah right so you know if we take the example of just the data i got to go sainsbury's okay back to the breath you know why didn't you know why did my colleague send me that nasty email you know back to the breath but then you say, okay, my mother in my childhood, you know, she made a comment about my childhood and it's, it's scarred me for life. And so now we're talking about something that's punching a bigger, more, you know, more of a punch because that thought has the grooves of thinking that will follow are really like ingrained. So when it comes up, it's like you just fall into it. It's like mm -hmm. that thought comes up and it's already packaged with a story. Yeah. There's a series of thoughts that follow. So every time that thought that comes up, you don't even need to go down the other, all the other thoughts because that's already loaded, that thought. And because it's such one that affects you a lot, it takes, that will take a lot more practice. Because the mm -hmm. idea of, you know, having a breath and the thought, you know, the thought comes up, have a breath and another thought comes up. But then when you have a really powerful one, it's like, it's the more wax on that we've done and it's the more mental push-ups that we've done that allow us to handle the more difficult thoughts. Because if it was easy, then no one would be, you know, having mental problems or stress or anxiety. But yeah, you know, it doesn't matter. Everyone has negative thinking and we all have the, the negative thoughts that are more impactful than other ones, right? Yeah. But it's the, this training your muscle, developing the strength. And that's why we keep doing it because it just, it's like, you know, you start with your white belt, then you get your, your orange belt, red belt, then purple belt, then black belt. It's like almost cloth. And each different belt allows you to deal a bit better with the, the more difficult thoughts. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you have your one, it's like, okay, well, you know, recommendation is just to start practicing. Cool.
Very good. And what's quite like, obviously, um, I've, I've been connected to you through our mutual friend, Marvin. And yes, I'm Marv. remembering now, now that you're talking about it, um, not about five or six months ago, we actually had like quite a big argument. Marvin got quite upset with me. Mm-hmm. Like he was, but I now know sort of where he was on his mindfulness path in the frustration of me being so negative and me being using language that I'd be like, ha 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 as a joke, but actually I'm laughing after it because I'm awkward because actually that really hurt me. So I can see now in sort of, you know, and in every wax on, wax off, there's that level of frustration where that person is punching that wall 500 times a day. And I feel like I kind of got Marvin in his punching 500 walls a day section but he's also always so brutally honest with his friends and that's why we love him because he'll tell you when you're not being okay but i can now see the journey that he's on and and where mine's starting and kind of what sort of moment yeah. i got Marvin in but yeah he was cross he was like why are you doing this everything yeah. you're saying is so negative and because he'd become more mindful he was listening to the language i'd use not necessarily the problem mm. and then that argument or that putting him putting me right it made me more mindful of okay actually do you really mean that word or is yeah. there a better word for you? so sometimes like when i say to people are you scared i say to them maybe apprehensive is a better word i, I don't want to yeah. use like proud it wasn't a you know maybe what was your highlight so far yes yes yeah a better way to put that and maybe i'll take mm-hmm. that forward in conversations because yeah limit someone with like pride can also is a negative connotation for a lot of people you're prideful mm. and yeah. pride ruins a lot mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah that was a, just a small story from our connection that made me that you really triggered that memory for me today and i thought oh this was where marvin was like why are you so negative yeah. it's not helping you but everyone has to get there you know and with friends like marvin you're going to get there so that's cool Yeah, so what what I'll say to that is I've been in the situations many times as well where I've, you know, and earlier on, it's like, you know, I try and force mindfulness on people. Oh, yeah, like, you know what I mean? But I I get where he was. He was also mindful not to be pushing it on me, but he was like, I know this and you know it and you know better. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, and the thing is because there's so many, it's so layered. You know, it's not so much mindfulness, but it's the benefits that mindfulness can bring. You know, it, you know, it can help with sleep. It can help with reduce stress, improve your immune system, and there's lots of physical amazing benefits. Yeah. But it also is it's the key to happiness. It's about you know not only happiness but learning who you are. Because again, yeah. when I say who are you, okay, I've got my labels. This is who I am, blah blah blah, and you've already got a story to tell. But like, but are you really? Mm. Okay, well then let, let let's let's explore that. Yeah. You know, because if life again, going back to this, you know, what is the purpose of life? What is happiness? Who are we? Who am I? That deserves some investigation. And yeah. the best way to find out who you are is to spend time in your mind. Because we spend mm. so much time out on the on the outside, and when we stop and we just witness, okay, what's going on in in here, in the in the laboratory of our own mind? That's when we really start to learn. That's when we can really peel away the layers. Because when you think, oh, the limitations you've given yourself, like I'm no good at this, or I'm useless, or you know, I'll, here are my strengths, and here, you know, you know, I'm a female living in the UK. You you got this story, this ego, and then the more we sit back and we peel away, okay, well maybe I'm not that. And then maybe I'm not that, and then maybe I'm not that. You know, then if I'm not that, then what am I? And it's yeah. it's very revealing, and it's a it's a very fascinating um, way to learn about yourself. Yeah, I had a moment. Um, I took a sabbatical from somewhere I've been for 16 years, and I said to someone, I said, "She's a like, Ricky. This Ricky Lee is exhausting. Like I actually <laughs> can't keep up with the." the idea of her that this environment's cultivated, that these interactions have bred, like she's a beast, dude. I, I mm. just don't have that energy for that anymore. Yeah. Like it's really part of who I've been and who I thought everyone thought I needed to be. And 
it's quite liberating to start going through this journey of not having that 600 people perception every day and everything that comes with that environment to actually sit back and think like, what are the things I really want to change about me? It might be things other people don't like, but if I like it, like, yeah. <laughs> but also and what are the things that help you to st to reduce suffering? Mm, exactly. And that's where all of that's attached to suffering, like being so hard, being so aggressive, like mm -hmm. that. Well, aggressive is the term people have used for me. I just feel like I'm quite honest and I maybe don't have tact, but I'm, you know, deemed aggressive. And it's like, well, I'm not actually like that at home when I'm relaxed and I'm safe and I, I don't feel negative space. I'm not really going to act like that at all. Yeah. So yeah, removing myself from an environment like that has has really been able to to help a lot. So I think a lot of people at home are now finally able to spend that real time with one another on their own. Yeah. And hope that this is a a great start for their their mindfulness journey with you. It's very cool. So we have sort of 15 minutes until we get kicked off. 14 minutes. So if you just want to talk maybe about some of the the ways people can get in touch with you and the courses that you do, because obviously yep. we just want to promote you guys as much as possible because what you're doing is fantastic. Yeah, so the website's mindfulnews.uk and there's guided meditations there. You know, if you go to the main page, there's one about stress and corona and, you know, some of the simple tools that you can use to, A, what we spoke about, observe thoughts, you know, bringing our attention back to the breath, this wax on, wax off idea of re repetition, repetition. And there's um, some podcasts, videos, um, other posts, and my contact information is there as well. Like I said, there's a huge library of these great conversations with other, um, you know, mindfulness scientists, yes. authors, speakers. Um, and again, it's not, not only mindfulness, but the idea of, you know, what matters in life. You know, what is key to happiness? And, you know, for me, it's the, it's the ability to, to be mindful. Yeah, I think what, um, what stood out for me so much from our chat yesterday was the kind of accountability. I find so often people want to blame God or blame some, you know, they don't want to take accountability. And my, what with mindfulness is so incredible is, you're only lying to yourself if you're not, you know, like you can pretend or say you're mindful or know the theory, but if you're not really, really doing it, yeah, it's like, it's, it's really, it's bizarre. It just takes that little bit of practice, but yeah, yeah fitting it in a flow and finding sort of making it okay for me to do it for myself is also going to help quite a lot because yeah. I'll put lots of things ahead of it, you know, like, yeah. and, and that's not okay anymore. It's like, I don't want necessarily to shove uh, you or any of this down somebody's throat, but I also appreciate in your background and your podcast, how people can now go themselves and research and do, you know, the background to this. It's not just something that you sort of thought about in your living room. You've dedicated your life's work to this and yeah, what's great is that you have all those podcasts so people can go back and see what you guys have done and then join in so whenever you guys have a podcast um we'll definitely post on handway to let you guys know that it's happening but go and follow them on mindfulnews.uk is yeah. that your instagram mm -hmm. yeah. and so what yeah, I, I mean will, i'm gonna say what yeah. i would say just you know final point is that mm -hmm. being human is very difficult you know, whether you're a billionaire or whether you're on the street, period. Being a human is very difficult. There's a lot of negative thinking, there's a lot of stresses. But also having negative thoughts is completely normal as well. You know, just very mm. quickly, our, our ancestors had to constantly be on the lookout for danger. There's no hospitals, no NHS. If you fell in that hole and you snapped your leg and it became gangrene and it got infected, you know, dead. If that spider bites you, you know, is that a stick or a snake? You know, is that a lion mm. or a saber-toothed tiger or, or is that shadows? Because if you weren't on the lookout for danger, effectively your genes would be wiped out. And it was those that were always on the lookout for danger that 
that survived. So we're yeah. descended from this, you know, and it's a great evolutionary gift. And I look upon that with a lot of gratitude. You know, I'm glad my ancestors did, ancestors did that. But in our modern society today, we don't have those threats. But we cultivate them in, you know, fear about the meeting with our boss. Meeting our boss, you know, the brain can't tell the difference and the way that it fires and responds to a life and death situation and meeting with your boss. It can be very stressful. But all this, these, these negative thoughts that we have, mm. when they arise and when we get to that habit of sitting down, doing our meditation rather, and the thoughts arise, it's when you notice it, don't be so personally attached to all the negative thoughts. Just remind yourself that, ah, it's because of our ancestral relationship to this, mm -hmm. you know, this crazy, always being looked at as a danger. That, that is a negative thought, negative thought, negative thought. It's the brain's way of trying to protect you. Yeah. So, you know, just one thing to take away. If you're, when you're having negative thoughts, a remind yourself, completely normal. The majority of your thoughts are negative. You just need to sit with your thoughts for five minutes and observe it, you'll know. Yeah. But it's an evolutionary gift. It's not your fault when you have negative thoughts, treat it with kindness and remind yourself, okay, when I've noticed it, bring it back to the breath. Because you know what? Another negative thought, another thought's gonna pop up, you know, within a, within a few instances. It could be literally, you know, nonstop. So it's this ability just yeah. to constantly bat it away throughout the day, the negative thoughts, the negative thoughts, thinking, thinking, thinking. Not yeah, to say that like... thinking is bad, the final point, no, no, not to, no. not, go on. No, no, uh, just in, like, not also are, there's also like, you said negative thoughts and- um, Not useful. Yeah, not useful. Because yeah. those are so important to acknowledge. Like you used an example yesterday of someone watching a gorilla walk across its enclosure. Mm -hmm. And they said it went over to the water fountain, but actually it stopped and had a dump. It walked over there, it ate a banana. So it's also, like you say, great to acknowledge those useless things that don't really add any value at all. Yep. alongside the negative thoughts is really mm -hmm. it's very helpful. Exactly. Yeah, so I mean, just thank you so, so much. This has been amazing for me. I hope you guys have really enjoyed this and it'll be up for 24 hours and then we'll screen record and put it up um, somewhere permanent when we find that place. Just bear with yep. me. And yeah, we'd love to chat with you again. Um, happy, maybe... happy to do this again. You know, on my website, there are courses available as well for those that are interested, but I'm happy to come back, you know, share guided meditations and answer any questions because these are strange times. Really you know, awesome. A lot of people are going crazy, just being locked at home. Some people are loving the idea. Well, lots of meditation practice, you know, lots mm -hmm. of time now to, 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 to get into to my formal practice. Yeah. But, uh, but it's reminding ourselves that what's important in life, what matters most to you? And if you don't know what direction you want to go in and you haven't figured that out, this is a good time to do it. You know, where do I want to be in three years? Where do I want to be in five years? What's important to me? Because you know, if it's just the money and the house and all that, then you're going down the wrong path. That, that, you know, we need a roof over our head. If it's not, you know, marble floors and chandeliers, great. But what really matters is our relationships with other people. You know, how good is the quality of your relationships with other people? And how good is the quali quality of your relationship with yourself? Because yeah. once you start, maybe not figuring it out completely, but go on the path to figuring it out, again, combining your passions with it, you start to play the game of life in the way that it is meant to be played. The game yeah. of life isn't meant to be played where you just suffer with these, you know, these like rocks on your back and you're just struggling and, oh, I'm bored or... It's, it's about, wow, how lucky are we al to be alive? How lucky Absolutely. are we sunshine? And, you know, it's, it starts to really understand the game in which it should be played. And then, you know, it's, it unravels so many amazing things. Yes. And um, a lot of uh, ladies, Artie, Tevia, they're all saying thank you very much. Um, and Zoe also thinks that um, the first, um, what is it, the movie? Wax on, wax off. Oh, oh that, karate, yeah. karate Kid, yeah. <laughs> gave a comment that the first one was the best but you know just you know i wanted to be mindful and yeah, mindfulness <laughs> but thank you all so much for joining and again Guy, thank you so much and i really look pleasure. forward to, pleasure. to more mindfulness and and like hoping I said, let's get all the course together i'm happy to you know if you want to jump jump on it you know i'm happy yeah. to to guide you through it
Great. Well, thanks, guys. And yeah, it's up for 24 hours. So share with other people, let them know. Um, I think this is so helpful for all of us. So yeah, have a great day. Thank you so much, Guy. No worries. All right. Take care. Speak to you soon. Bye. All right. Bye. bye.